changes in the air, not only in the weather, but also the housing market. There's some inflection points that I'm seeing happen in the data showing that we should start seeing a changing housing market over the next couple weeks and months. Hi, I'm Josh Alexander from Discover Your Belinda, your one-stop shop for all things Your Belinda. On today's episode, I'm gonna be going over my April housing market forecast for Your Belinda, what changes you should expect to see coming, what does that mean for both buyers and sellers. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so we're gonna break this episode into four different sections. First, we're gonna go over some Your Belinda specific data. Then we're gonna go over what supply and demand are currently doing and what they're going to do over the next couple months. And then we're gonna talk about interest rates, which is what everybody's talking about right now. And finally, we're gonna wrap up with what that all means for both sellers and buyers. So let's go ahead and start with some Your Belinda specific stats. So let's go ahead and look at some of the stats from the March housing market in Your Belinda. So on the low end, the least expensive home that sold in Your Belinda was $425,000. It was a one bedroom, one bathroom condo, and it was just a little over 675 square feet. And on the opposite side of the spectrum, the highest price home sold for $3.25 million, and that was a four bedroom, four and a half bath home, which was 4,373 square feet. Now, because it's still early April, I don't have all the data for the off-market homes that have sold in your Belinda. However, from the homes on the MLS, the median home sold in your Belinda was sold for $1.265 million. So now let's go ahead and look at the days on market. So that's the day it goes on the market to the day it goes into escrow. So if you look at homes under a million dollars, those homes typically went into escrow in 12 days or less. If we're looking at homes between one and $2 million, those typically went into escrow in seven days or less. Now for homes $2 million and above, those typically sold in 21 days or less. However, that data is a little bit skewed because there was one home that was a new construction that took 119 days to sell. So that really skewed the data. If you take that one out of the equation, we actually had a days on market of anything that was over 2 million of 13 days or less. So that's why I said everything is pretty much selling in two weeks or less right now. Now in terms of the active inventory we currently have available as of April 5th, we only have 31 homes on the market right now. Typically, we have at least double that, if not more, so inventory is still extremely low. So let's go ahead and look at that inventory and look at some supply and demand numbers. So let's go ahead and start with the supply side first. So supply is still at historic lows. We haven't started off April with this low supply in Orange County in over 40 years. So needless to say, there's just not enough homes to go around. Right now, there's just barely over 1,500 homes on the market and that really hasn't changed much in the last four weeks. However, during April and May, we typically see the most amount of homes per month hit the market. So I am expecting to see those homes gradually increase as the weeks go on, as we head closer and closer into summer. Okay, so now let's look at the demand side of things. So unfortunately for the last two years, demand has been extremely hard to measure correctly. And the reason being is the traditional way that we measure demand in the real estate market is how many pending sales that we have every single month. So how many homes are going into escrow? The problem with that is for every home that goes into escrow, right now there's probably four, six, eight, ten buyers that were lined up to purchase that same home that didn't get it and are now unaccounted for. So it's a really skewed measurement when looking at pending sales because demand is so much higher than what's currently in escrow because there's just not enough homes to go around. So really the only thing that we're able to do is look at future demand and the way we do that is by looking at mortgage applications. So how many new buyers are talking to lenders, getting those mortgage applications started for them to purchase a new home. And over the last two months, we've been seeing the trend develop that mortgage applications in general have been heading in the downward direction. So as interest rates have been going up, you've been seeing that direct correlation, mortgage applications have also been decreasing. So that's basically telling us over the next couple of weeks and months, we can expect to see demand start to slow down. And that's pretty typical for this time of year. So typically most years demand is gonna peak anywhere between April and May, and then it starts its slow decline as we go through the remainder of the year. So I think we're gonna have that same trend happen. I don't think we've hit peak demand yet. However, over the next week or two, I wouldn't be surprised if we did reach peak 
peak demand, and then we start seeing that demand slow down as we head into summer. And again, besides just the typical cycle that we see in demand every year, another thing that's really contributing to that demand going down is interest rates. So unless you've been living under a rock, you probably know by now that interest rates have been accelerating relatively quickly this year, especially over the last six weeks. So since the beginning of this year, we started interest rates right around 3.31%. And as of today, which is April 5th, we just crossed over for the average interest rate on a 30-year fixed mortgage to 5.02%. So we haven't been at over 5% interest rates since at least 2018. So as interest rates go up, affordability goes down, so less buyers are going to enter the market. So that's naturally going to weed some of the buyers out that might have been able to afford a home, but over the last two months have really been priced out of the market. So if you're thinking of buying a home or you're selling a home and then thinking of buying another one, you might be asking yourself, yes, interest rates have gone up, but how does that actually really impact my affordability and what I'm paying every month? So let's look at a quick example just to see what a dramatic difference there is when you compare buying a home at the beginning of this year compared to buying a home now. So let's go ahead and say in January of this year, you were looking at homes right around the million dollar price point. Interest rates were at 3.31% and that brought your payment, if we're just looking at principal and interest to make this easy, right around $4,155. Now, if you were trying to buy that same million dollar property today at today's interest rate of 5%, guess how much your monthly payments would be? They would be $5,111. That's over $950 more every single month that you're paying today compared to buying that same million dollar property a couple months ago. Now let's look at this a different way. So let's say you're looking at the payments and not the purchase price. So let's say you're trying to keep your payments right around that $4,155. So again, at the beginning of this year, that would have given you the ability to purchase a home at a million dollars. If you look at that purchasing power today, trying to keep that payment the same, you're only able to afford a home that's around $815,000. That's a dramatic difference on what you could afford at the beginning of the year compared to right now with those same monthly payments. And the sad part is that's not even including appreciation, which we've had a lot of over the last couple months. If you add appreciation into the equation, you're gonna be at home prices less than $800,000 at this point. So you went from $1 million purchasing power to less than $800,000 purchasing power in just a little over three months. That's a dramatic difference. And you can see how this is going to impact the amount of buyers who are gonna to wanna to purchase homes as we finish the rest of the year. And interest rates are only projected to continue to rise. Recently, the Fed has become more and more aggressive of trying to battle the inflation that we're having, which just means that there's a much better chance that interest rates over the long term are gonna be heading up and not down. So that's definitely something that you need to be taking into account when you're thinking about buying a home this spring or summer. So now that we have that out of the way, let's go ahead and look at what that actually means for both the selling side and the buying side and my recommendations if you're a buyer or seller in today's market. So sellers, if you're in the position where you need to sell your house in order to buy another one, this might be a good window of opportunity for you to do both. And the reason being is right now, demand is still extremely high. Yes, it is slowing down. However, we still have unprecedented demand in the market right now. So if you put your home on the market at market value, that's the big thing to remember. You need to be pricing it correctly. You put it on the market at market value, you're still most likely going to get multiple offers. You're still going to get a great price for your home and you're dictating most of the terms in the contract. Now, once you get into escrow and start looking for a new home, there's a good chance that over the upcoming weeks and months that you're going to see inventory continue to rise, which means that you're gonna be able to have more homes to choose from and a little bit less competition because of that. So you're kind of getting the best of both worlds as we transition into the summer market. On top of that, if you have kids right now and you don't wanna move until the summertime and you're thinking now's a little bit too early to place my house on the market, now is actually the perfect time to place your house on the market if you wanna be able to move during the summer. And there's a couple reasons. One, if you place your house on the market, you're able to dictate the terms. And what that means for you is that you can get into escrow and you can not only close escrow in 30 days, but you can find a buyer that's willing to let you live in that property for an additional two months after that while you look for your new property. And by the time you find your new property, which typically in this market is going to take a little bit longer than normal because of the lack of inventory, 
inventory, you're going to be able to find that property, close on that property, and by that time, your kids are going to be out of school and you're going to be able to transition them from one house to another without having to worry about schoolwork getting in the way and being disturbed in the middle of the school year. So if you're thinking about trying to transition from one house to another during the summertime because you have kids or just because you want to move in the summer, now is going to be the perfect time to get your house on the market to take advantage of the current demand as well as be able to start looking for new homes hitting the market at a more rapid pace as we get towards the end of April into May. Okay, so now for the buying side. Yes, if you're trying to buy a home right now, it's pretty depressing that interest rates have shot up so significantly. You're probably kicking yourself in the butt for not trying to purchase a home sooner in order to lock in those low interest rates. However, if you're a typical home buyer, you're not someone that's just a speculator trying to figure out and time the market, you're buying the home for the long term, you shouldn't be trying to time the market. You shouldn't be looking at the interest rate level. You should be looking at your monthly payments. Is it affordable? Can I make those monthly payments without putting financial stress on myself and my family? And can I get into the area that I want to be in with the amenities I want for that price? If the answer is yes and you're buying that home for the long term, then yes, right now is still a great time to purchase a home because interest rates are still projected to go up. Appreciation is still happening. So if you're going to wait for a few more months and then get in the market, you're just going to be able to afford less and you might price yourself out of the market in the meantime. Now, if you aren't buying a home for the long term and you plan on only living there two to three years, then right now you do have to be a little bit more cautious because interest rates are going up, demand is starting to slow slightly, so you need to be cautious when placing your offer. You don't just wanna be throwing out offers that are 50, 100,000 over asking price, over market value, because as we go further into summer, appreciation is going to finally start slowing down as long as we see this inventory finally start hitting the market. And when appreciation slows down, if you overpay for a house, it's going to take you longer to be able to make up that difference. So if you're in the home for the short term, you have to be very cautious about placing offers right now, or financially to get into the area that you wanna be in, you know that you're gonna to have to take on a mortgage that's going to be uncomfortable, now is probably not the best time to purchase a home for you. You don't wanna to get to a spot where you're house poor, where all of your money is going to that monthly mortgage payment and you have no money to do anything else. No one wants to be in that spot. It's not an enjoyable lifestyle. So you need to understand your finances before you start looking at purchasing a home. Know what you can afford, know what you're comfortable with, and know that you're not gonna have issues paying that mortgage down the road. Yes, lending standards are much stricter than they used to be, so typically you're not gonna get a loan for a property that you're not going to be able to afford, but it's up to you, not the lender, to determine that. So you need to understand your financial situation before you start placing offers on homes. Now let's say that you don't believe myself or any of the major housing economists in the United States that the housing market is going to continue to appreciate, and you think the housing market is going to crash. Well, lucky for you, last week, I did a video on this exact topic and why it's still going to be a disadvantage for you to wait to buy even if the housing market does correct versus buying right now. So if you're interested in getting that information, if you're watching this on YouTube, I'll post a link right up here. Otherwise, just check out my last episode and you can see exactly why waiting even if the market does correct and goes down is still most likely going to put you in a worse spot than purchasing a home today. So if you're finding this information useful, please make sure you do hit that like button. It helps me out tremendously. And if you like this information, also don't forget to hit that subscribe and bell button below if you're watching this on YouTube. Until next week, stay healthy, stay happy, and I'll see you on the next show. Bye.